What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is Daher Radiology and today we're going to be doing part two of the fellowship series on MSK Radiology. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright guys, so first and foremost we're going to talk about the different imaging modalities that are offered in MSK. Uh, last time we talked about this in the abdominal fellowship, so I thought it would be important to compare and contrast. In the MSK world, there's everything from radiographs to ultrasounds to CT to MRI. And within the MSK world, um, they use a combination of all of these scans to come up with a diagnosis in a lot of different cases. In the radiograph um, of MSK, you have a whole subset of, you know, sports medicine where you're looking at fractures, you're looking at joint spaces, um, and then, you know, you also have the ability to look at tumors on x-ray, which is super helpful for looking for things like uh, osteoid matrix, um, if you're looking for periosteal reactions, aggressive features, for example. The x-ray actually provides quite a bit more information and sometimes provides information that the MRI will not have access to. So it's super important um, and it's part of the everyday practice of an MSK radiologist. Furthermore, you have ultrasound. So ultrasound is kind of unique in the MSK world. Um, ultrasound is actually used in a lot of screening tools, for example, in um, shoulder tears, for example, when you're thinking about the rotator cuff, uh, you're looking at the tendons and the tendon sheaths and their insertion points and um, it's actually very helpful for seeing you know full thickness tears partial thickness tears and it's a really good screen as a imaging modality it's very different than in the abdominal world where you're very used to seeing you know right upper quadrant pain rule out cholecystitis you know those are very familiar features that you see especially going through residency doing a lot of call work um, ultrasound in the MSK world is kind of, you know, unique. You don't get so much exposure to it and it's not so intuitive in that sense. And it's very user dependent. So you actually get really good at ultrasound um, in terms of the technical skills yourself when doing a MSK fellowship. Um, furthermore, we do a lot of, you know, they do a lot of CT scans. Uh, CTs can be used in different ways. A lot of the time CTs in the MSK world are preoperative planning, so the you know, fracture has been identified on x-ray, the orthopedic surgeons want to know more about how the fracture looks like, so they do a CT scan. It tells them about you know displacement, impaction, if there's any um, loose bodies that are in the joint space that they need to deal with, uh, so it gives a lot more information for preoperative planning. But on the other hand, there's also CT when used for things like, you know, hairline fractures where they aren't seen on the x-ray or there's a suspected um, fracture that, you know, just wasn't seen initially in presentation. A lot of the times, you know, your scaphoids happen this way um, and you look for other things like avascular necrosis and secondary complications. It helps really well with, you know, infection as well as a preliminary scan. So, you know, CT is also very widely and broadly used in the MSK world, but it does play quite a significant part in the MSK radiologist's everyday um, studies. Uh, furthermore, you have your MRI. So your MRI is kind of the big bulk of the MSK world. It really helps to define soft tissues, uh, and that's where the money is at, where we can't really look at those things on the other modalities as well. Uh, so you use your MRI to, you know, assess for partial thickness tears, full thickness tears of the rotator cuffs, for example. You're looking at the tendons, you're looking at the different joints, that if there is any pathology that can be identified, and it's super, super uh, specific uh, for looking at those soft tissue structures. Um, it also is very useful for when you're looking at oncology cases, especially when you're dealing with uh, tumors of the bones or the soft tissues. You know, the MRI will give you characteristics of enhancement of T1 and T2 characteristics. Um, and it, overall, it's a very strong tool in diagnosis and management for uh, the pathology at hand. So in combination, all of the modalities are used in the MSK world, all to different extents. 
um, but uh, during your fellowship training you'll be exposed to all of those things and you'll hopefully develop an appreciation for the combination of the modalities to coming up with a appropriate pathology and um, treatment plan. The other thing that I was gonna talk about today is the procedures that are done in MSK world. I talked a little bit about this in the abdominal videos. Uh, so in the MSK world, there are kind of, I would say, two main procedures that are done a lot. Obviously, there are main, many more procedures within the realm of MSK, but I'm gonna talk to you about two of those. Um, arthrograms, these are procedures where um, contrast is injected uh, into joint spaces to better analyze this fine, finer details of the joint space. Uh, so what will happen is the patient's brought into the special procedures room under fluoroscopy, uh, you know, local anesthetic is used to, uh, to actually freeze the skin where a deeper needle will be used to uh, go into the joint space confirmed with contrast and then injected with a gadolinium agent, for example, uh, when trying to analyze uh, finer details on MRI. Uh, so this is done so that you can see things like the labrum and it, uh, it highlights those things uh, when doing the MRI scan and it's done very, very often, especially when the clinical indication is something like a labral tear. Uh, the other procedure would be pain uh, management uh, and pain injections. So a lot of uh, MSK is doing uh, joint injections, getting into small joints, getting into big joints, and injecting corticosteroid uh, for pain relief. This is super helpful for patients. It's very, very common and it can make a significant impact on patient care and a lot of MSK radiology is that using your ultrasound guidance skills, using your fluoroscopy skills, uh, you're getting into these joints that you know need imaging guidance. They can't just be done you know, blindly and the orthopedic surgeons send them to you all the time, family doctors send you, send you them all the time. Um, so it's, not, it's a skill that you very much get used to. All right, so the next part we're gonna talk about is the pros and cons of MSK. Um, I've already talked a lot about this uh, throughout the video so far, but uh, we'll just kind of organize our thoughts here. So for the pros of doing an MSK fellowship, um, you get a, a vast uh, kind of variety of procedures that you can do. Uh, it makes it a good mix of interventional and diagnostic radiology. You get to do procedures that really help patients and their outcomes, especially with uh, pain injections uh, and joint injections. Um, you also get quite a breadth of training. So from x-rays to ultrasound to MRI, you become an expert in ultrasound scanning yourself. And you kind of have this subset of information or knowledge that a lot of other people aren't very comfortable with. And what I mean by that is in residency, you learn quite a bit of radiology, um, trying to get a breadth of everything and to be a competent general radiologist. But MSK is one of those um, subspecialties that the more you dive into, really the more um, information you realize is there. Um, it's really a broad and vast area and a lot of people don't feel comfortable reading advanced MSK scans out in the practice if they haven't done a fellowship. So you kind of provide a subspecialty skill that not many other people have. Another pro of MSK radiology would be the lifestyle modifications that it can provide for you. So a lot of MSK is non-urgent. Uh, not many emergencies that really need to be dealt with immediately. So a lot of the times if you have a list of MSK studies that you have, you may be able to postpone it to go see you know your kids recital or soccer game or whatever and finish those scans at another time because it's not really time sensitive whereas if you were doing body for example and you had an emergent scan that needs to be read it's usually something that needs to be read pretty quickly so that can provide some kind of lifestyle modification some of the cons of msk radiology is the same one as the pros is that there's quite a bit to learn uh, it can be very difficult and very challenging and a lot of different types of tumors and subs, subselects of uh, you know eponyms and whatnot to learn within the fellowship. So it can be a lot of studying and constant learning. Another con of MSK radiology is that 
it is pretty specific and you may um, may not want something that is super specific. Uh, you would lose out on some of the other skills such as potentially neuro or you know other you know obstetrics or other forms of radiology that are uh, more generic and and you won't uh, have that exposure to that anymore but that can really apply to any subspecialty that you do and of course if you find a practice that you have to read all of the general work anyways then you won't be missing out on that so not so much as a con but something to consider another con of msk radiology maybe that um you you know there are limited fellowships um, in North America, um, most of which are pretty competitive because of all the pros that we talked about in MSK, and generally are smaller programs. Uh, you know, it's more of a smaller subspecialty in radiology, so uh, it can be difficult to get into. Um, and so that may or may not affect your decision as to pursuing MSK. Obviously, if you love it, you should go for it. Uh, but all in all, those are kind of the pros and cons of what I think an MSK uh, fellowship has to offer. I'll end off by talking a little bit about the billings uh, because we did that uh, on our previous um, video on abdominal imaging. And the same principles hold true. The more MRI that you have, the more billing that you're doing for your group. And that's just generally as a, you know, a pretty common statement. Uh, obviously, MRI is limited to the exposure of your institution. So if you have a lot of dedicated MSK MRI time, then you're going to be remunerated quite well. Um, but you also are responsible for quite a bit of x-rays and ultrasounds, which don't tend to pay as much. So overall, I would say that, you know, in North America, I would say specifically in Canada, um, that the average remuneration is probably between the average to above average, uh, but can be quite high elsewhere in the world, like in the States, um, in Australia, for example, where there's a lot of private institutions that are doing a lot more MRI, MSK. And that's all I have for today. Uh, obviously is a broad overview of the MSK fellowship. If there are any questions, please leave them down below and hopefully I can answer them. And if you like this video and like the other videos, please remember to subscribe to the channel. We have many more of these series coming out. Please leave a comment down below if you have another subspecialty you want reviewed. And I'd love to hear more from you. So until next time, guys, we'll see you later.